we have the champion of MLG Columbus versus the champion of DreamHack. We have Liquid versus IM. We have Huck versus MVP, a Protoss versus a Terran on Metalopolis. I am Squiggles, and thank you for joining me for another cast, and I expect this one to be absolutely epic because, like I said, it is Huck versus MVP, the champion of MLG Columbus. I am MVP taking it in convincing fashion, and on the other side, Liquid Huck, the champion of DreamHack. Oh, my God. Goodness, those were such good games. I was watching some of them this morning before I decided to cast this game, and they were truly epic and awesome and all that is baller. So, Huck and I am MVP, and they both apparently know each other. I would expect nothing less, and they are all good-mannered and just going to be talking it up a little bit as this game gets going. One thing to note, that this is on Metalopolis, so this is on Lago Watchtower, going to be pretty important considering their spawn locations. And it also looks like they're going to be close by air and a bit farther by land. But that is per standard. And it looks like there is going to be a uh, barracks going down pretty much on schedule by MVP. Just going to be doing a little bit of a wally wall at his ramp there. Never a bad idea. And it looks like Huck is going to be the first one to scout as per standard as well. And it looks like he's going to be scouting after Gateway. So most times I see Protoss scouting after Pylon. But guess what? Huck wanting to just be a little bit more economical and go ahead and scout after Gateway. And he is going to see that, ooh, in fact, MVP is not there. And actually, he's going to scout MVP dead last. So, And also, he is saying that he has a terrible Protoss versus Protoss win rate <laughs> at around 25%. But that is okay because... This this is a Protoss versus Terran, which he is decidedly more baller at. So it looks like we have a gas down for MVP now. Going to get his command center or morphing into the orbital command right around 15 supply, which is what you want. And there is the wall being completed by MVP. Going to have that Marine out as well. So this probe going to see absolutely zero, except that he can see that there is a standard wall. And that is all he is going to be able to see. So... Sorry, Proby. A little bit late to this party. Maybe next time you'll stop taking your fiesta and get over here a little bit earlier. But for now, it looks like MVP is going to be returning the favor and scouting in the longest distance possible, going from here to here to here. Yay! And what is this? Ooh, MVP getting a quick factory. And he is going to be putting this over in a little corner. And that means he wants to hide it. And that means he's getting a second refinery, which I think is going to mean... I'm going to say Banshees. I'm just going to throw it out there, Banshees, and hopefully I'm right. Meanwhile, it looks like MVP has a couple of Marines out here at the bottom of his ramp. Doesn't want to get scouted, so he's not going to be able to get scouted at all. Throwing down a bunker at the top of his ramp. Going to be super safe. That also signals to me that he is going to be teching because he has the bunker, and that is what Lick, or Huck rather should take from that as well. And it looks like this probe is going to be putting on as much pressure pressure with a taser as he possibly can down he goes and look at this early expo going up for huck so it looks like he actually went for uh went for a gateway and then a cyber core and then a nexus does have two gas his second gas going down right now and this is a little bit weird we have the terran with two gas before the, the protoss that's that's um, not standard at all, but what we do have here is it looks like we have a tech lab just finishing on this factory as well as a starport going down, which I think is going to mean Banshees again, unless he gets, like, uh, extended thermal lance. But I, Whoa, that's the wrong upgrade. <laughs> this isn't Protoss. This is Terran, unless he gets the Infernal Preigniter. There we go. But it looks like he is not going to do that. He's going to go ahead and lift this up, get the tech lab on this starport, and we are going to see Banshees versus an early expanding Protoss. But Huck with his star sense is getting a robo facility. So is he going to be able to get an observer out in time? Thank you for asking. I think he will because you can see that Cloak just now started, and Cloak does take a while to finish. So he will have a Banshee out, obviously, before Cloak, and the Banshee could do some damage, but it looks like there is a Stalker as well. And it looks like hmm, one, of one of the Stalkers from Liquid Huck is going to be Holding down this Zelmaga Watchtower like an absolute ba -ba -ba baller, and this probe is going to leave a string of pylon pylons in his wake as he goes ahead and pushes up over here into the natural of MVP. Now, MVP does have a bunker and a couple of supply depots guarding <clears throat> the top of his ramp. 
And, oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. MVP going to be ninja expanding over here to the far edges of space. And this Banshee is going to be poking around here, seeing what damage he can do. There are a couple of Stalkers out. And by a couple, I mean three, four, Huck. So Huck is totally prepared for this. And so now MVP is going to have to wait until Cloak finishes. You can see Cloak at about 90% uh, about done right now. So he's just going to have to be careful. He doesn't lose too much health before Cloak finishes. Another Banshee on the way. And, oh, my goodness, this Banshee is like totally cut off and scissored and is he going to be able to survive it i don't think he's going to be able to and the banshee goes down that's such a huge deal right as cloak finishes too so oh no huck has to be feeling good after that and look at this it is already 52 supply versus 35 supply there is an observer out but he is going the wrong way and this banshee is going to be up and he is going to be doing as much as no no the observer comes back and now the banshee has a ton of being pressure being put on him again and i don't think he's going to be able to escape again as he gets flanked and the second banshee goes down so if we took a, take a look at the units lost tab we can see that only one worker was lost for Huck and I mean look at this he has lost one probe and he has killed three units look at the resources 50 for 550 and a lot of that is gas as well as well as the stealth upgrade so those banshees are doing absolutely nothing and now Huck is going to be poking around in here he's going to see the expo just about to finish and he's going to see that he's transitioning into tanks getting some medevacs as well as marine stim just now starting and so he's going to be feeling pretty good of course he does not know that there is an expansion over here by MVP but here comes a lot of units for Huck he even has an immortal a few uh, sentries with a lot of energy and a lot of stalkers as well as a few zealots so here comes an incredibly big force for huck and is mvp going to be able to hold look at the supply differences huck is ahead by about 30 supply already we are nine minutes and 30 seconds of the game and huck is ahead by 30 supply that is crazy and you see mvp might macroing a little bit and getting some of that down and it looks like the siege mode is finished but if he tries to move out here and if he's, these tanks are not sieged oh great force field by huck look at that and able to take out all of those oh even better by mvp it's like great play followed by great counter play and it looks like oh uh, it looks like the orbital will be okay siege tanks have siege one down they're sieged in the back and now a whole bunch of workers are being pulled off to try to heal this bunker. Force fields all around the bunker, though, reducing the area at which it can be healed. And these zealots are doing so much damage to the SCVs and everything else. But it looks like the bunker will, in fact, go down. Siege tank doing a lot of damage. Second siege tank is out and is doing damage as well. There is an immortal doing tons of damage, but it goes down. And now there is just stalkers left. Oh, my goodness, killing the supply depot as well. And look at this. Liquid Huck with a 64 over 40 supply lead over MVP. And Huck is going to pull back for just a second here. My goodness, what a crazy good push. And you can see now it looks like MVP going to be dropping some mules in his main now. He wants to keep up the facade, even though he's behind. He wants to keep up the facade that he does not, in fact, have an expansion here. So make sure nobody tells Huck. And oh my goodness, it looks like this probe trying to put down pylons. Two pylons going down as he pushes up through. And it looks like he's going to be focusing on this tank. Tank is down. Second tank is under pressure. And second tank is down as well. So now it's just Marauders against these stalkers marauders are pretty good against stalkers and here comes out all the scvs again and the stalker is going to do a little bit of stutter sap micro here killing off a couple more scvs they did not get the memo my goodness they need better internet connection that memo would have saved them their lives they would have known that they were falling back it looks like mv or huck rather going to be pushing up again doing lots of damage with these zealots and oh zealots being warped in in the main now Oh my goodness, and this is what he needed. This is what these pylons are so good for, and these zealots, just they're going to be able to tank so much damage and do a lot of damage as well. And is he going to be able to keep his line of sight? He is able to get another zealot in there, and so his line of sight continues warping in even more zealots. Oh my goodness, and it looks like he has five warp gates up now based on his number of units. I don't want to go back to his base and check, but so much damage being done, and I think MVP may actually just barely hold this. I'm not sure. Oh no, this is not what you want. You have SCVs versus zealots and it looks like he will clean that up my goodness more zealots even morphing in and he is doing his best to kill them off as quickly as possible but just mvp's base is under so much pressure my goodness and it looks like it looks like huck will in fact be forced to pull back now and mvp is going to secure it look at the supplies 60 over 50 and oh the observer gets taken out as well so he cannot tattletale anymore he is going to have to rebuild himself and it looks like he is right now. Yay! Meanwhile, it looks like we have a Twilight Council going down for Huck, as well as Combat Shields going down for MVP. So MVP managing to barely survive that attack. And Huck has his expansion all the way up and saturated right now. Twilight Council on the way. He has a robo already done, obviously. And look at this. He has 
uh, Forge hasn't really done anything with it yet, but I expect he will at some point. And look at Huck s doing such a good job of just preparing for any kind of counterattack. And look at this, counterattack is coming because MVP knows he's behind and he knows he needs to go ahead and do something. So he's going to be dropping guys in this little area here. Huck should probably put a pile on there, just saying. And it looks like he, Huck is going to... Oh, MVP is going to be forced to move away. Wow, Huck is just so good at not being countered. And look at this, taking a third. He realizes he is so far ahead. He can see because of his observer who is sipping his coffee with his pinky red. Mm, yes, mm, so good. Yes, yes. And he is going to be reporting back on everything he sees. And he's going to see that MVP is just now expanding. So Huck is going to have to feel really good. He feels like he is going to be on a solid three bases versus two bases. Little does he know that their bases are actually identical. And little does he know that their supplies are almost even as well. 73 supply versus 81 supply. And MVP getting a little bit whoopsie doopsie supply block there. But it looks like he will be rectifying that situation by throwing up throwing down a bajillion bunkers, and by bunkers I mean supply depots, all at the same time. Meanwhile, MVP starting to get a decent amount of siege tanks out. Looks like he has four right now. I'm um, not going to be getting any additional ones. Getting out a Raven because he wants to make sure he doesn't die to any kind of any kind of DTs, maybe? I don't I don't know. But it looks like we have a Stargate going down, or a Stargate finished. Where's the Stargate? Looks like there's two Stargates. Where are these Stargates? There they are! <laughs> two Stargates with Void Rays. And look at this. Because of his rally, I think he is going to mass up some Void Rays before he actually attacks. And this is going to be pretty scary. He, uh, MVP does have a uh, not even actually really that many Marines. My goodness. Building an additional barracks now. So he's going to be on four racks. Two of them with tech labs. And so he's going to be getting, it looks like, uh, all of his upgrades. His last upgrade he is getting is his concussive shells. And he does have only one barracks with a reactor. So getting a second reactor with his factory. And he's going to use that with his starport, actually, to be able to get out some medevacs two by two. I would... I would surmise. And look at this. Looks like two Void Rays are already done. Two more on the way. And look at this pylon spread by Huck. My goodness, that's not a pylon. That's a probe. Ha. But just look at these pylons, man. They are everywhere. And this just gives Huck such a good idea of what's going on. He'll be able to spot any kind of drops, anything like this. And even still, he has... Oh, my goodness. He has these stalkers just perfectly placed to stop any kind of drop any kind of any kind of anything really he just has them perfectly placed and now we have the epic stalker versus marauder and who is going to win the stalker was able to get off two free shots and the blink and so it looks like the stalker is going to be saying Psh, one stalker actually kills one marauder if um in optimal situation so for everybody who's like one marauder kills one stalker and i am one of those people apparently in sun in sun situations in some situations that is not actually accurate but you know it does kill a stalker one marauder followed by another marauder <laughs> so this second marauder going to come in here he's going to take his couple of nope never mind the stalker's just gonna leave and oh my goodness marauder's gonna be like that's not fair i was supposed to win that fight and he's gonna stem and run back to his base my goodness look at that and now nobody has control of the watchtower fine so you wanted it you wanted it neither of you get it how's that oh my goodness huge drop coming on by mvp and he does have a point defense drone so these stalkers are going to be uh, less than useless. A couple of zealots being picked off for nothing. They gave their lives for ire, and it was for naught. And oh, Huck revealing his void rays now. And it looks like he has five void rays, as well as plus one shields are done? What? As well as plus one to air attack. So all kinds of funky upgrades going on for Huck. And look at this, getting plus two shields. Doesn't have any armor or attack for ground. And this is the weirdest upgrade pattern I've ever seen. Nobody ever gets shields, ever, and Huck is getting plus two before he gets any kind of ground to anything. But I guess that kind of makes sense because he's getting void rays, and shields do affect every unit. So, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Oh, no, look at these Marines stimming and running in. Huck doing a good job pulling back the one void ray, and so he's going to kill all those Marines and lose it. nothing. My goodness, just some health off of one void ray, and these Vikings doing their best. They are going to be killing off the one void ray, and Micro and trying to kill off another one. He needs to target fire the one that's really low on health. Uh, He's not going to be able to, though. Looks like he's just going to be... Boom! There goes one, and there goes another one. There we go. Three... Oh, no. Two more by Hux. No, he's still at five at this point. And poor MVP. His main base has been under attack this entire time. You can see over here that Huck is marshalling up his forces with a ton of Guardian Shields, as well as the potential for Force Fields as well. And so these Void Rays are going to be doing a good job of splitting Huck's forces in half. 
And by Huck, I mean MVPs, although I guess Huck's forces are split in half, <laughs> to be fair. Now, we do know that Blink is done for these Stalkers, but there is just so many Siege Tanks here that I don't think Huck is going to be able to get in there, but he can just come in here. I mean, why not? He does have a bajillion, bajillion, trillion Void Rays blinking up Stalkers now in as well, and these Marauders stimming, even getting cut off a little bit by these Force Fields. Oh, no! And having to stim again, so these Marauders are going to be very low and not very good against the Void Rays, although they are going to take out the Stalkers. Marines continuing to spawn, and it looks like some Vikings doing their little stutter step, trying to do everything they can do. And it looks like Huck may, in fact, pull back. But look at the damage he's done. He's up by about 20 supply now, almost 30. And Huck just doing a great job of staying ahead, or at least thinking he's staying ahead. But right now, he is definitely ahead in supply. My goodness, let's go ahead and check the army tab really quick. You can see that they're working.